I love Dennis Ball. Hello, ballers. I'm Captain Dennis Ball. Who's in the chat? Who we got here? Paper Bagman, what's up? Georgia Constitution Media, what's up? And, of course, we got Mark Rojas in the house with his standard trademark. Hi, what's up, Mark Rojas? Now, what's the star date again? Do you guys know? Never mind. This is a very special episode, ballers. We're here in the B quadrant, and this is the deck of the USS Subscribe. Our mission is to boldly roll where no ball has rolled before. Hang on, we'll be inhaled again. On screen. Oh my gosh, it's Captain Blue Banshee, musical composer for television and film. What's up, Blue Banshee? What's up, Dan? Oh my gosh, you must be stuck in a wormhole. You're lagging and freezing. <laughs> Hold on, I'm hoping that you're going to come back to me, man. Up. Oh. You said, what's up, Dennis? Yes, what's up, Dennis Ball? Thank no, you for having what, me. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, man? I'm glad to have you here on the show. You know, you did musical work for Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z. You did a Gilbert Gottfried show. Oh, you no, did so no, much. I, I, I never did Dragon Ball Z. No. Oh, you didn't do that one? No, no, I didn't do oh, that. Oh, no, it was just Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Forgive me. Forgive me. But no, we're going to talk I, about you. I did Blue Man Group. Blue Man, we're, yes, we're going to talk more about your work and how you were inspired by James Horner's Star Trek scores. But first, before we get into the nitty gritty of that, and I can't wait to hear the details, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take you to the holodeck for some dad jokes. I have mainframe, my computer mainframe has developed a program, Blue Banshee, which is a perfect simulation of my old comedy club on Earth, Chuckle Balls. Ooh. Ever been? No. Computer, run program, Chuckle Balls. Guys, you can park your virtual cars behind the vir virtual Chuckle Balls. Virtual parking is difficult to find in Virtual Ball City. And here we are at Chuckle Balls, virtual Chuckle Balls. Let's get some music playing, Liz. I want to, yeah, there we go. We got flute ball playing here. Perfect. Now, ballers, um... Come on in, everybody. Super Bowl, they're with me, man. Super Bowl's the bouncer. Get it? He's a Super Bowl and he bounces, Blue Banshee. <laughs> Get it? Thank you. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. We're, yes, she was stuck in a wormhole, right? He knows. He watches. You, you froze for a second, and I said you must be stuck in a wormhole. I was stuck in a wormhole. <laughs> All right, hold on. I got some jokes. Um, this one's first one's for you. You know, Star Wars characters make the worst sports fans. You know why, Liz? No. They always root for the away team. Ow. They root for the away team, which is the guys who go down to the planet. All right, hold on a second. Um, this one goes out to Georgia Constitution Media, and I'm going to, hold on, I have to adjust my thing here. What do Star Trek? What do all Star Trek captains have in common? Georgia Constitution Media. They all have three ears. Did you know that they have a left ear and a right ear, of course? But you don't notice that a lot of them have a final front ear. Ow. 
A final front ear. Thank you. She's laughing. That's a thing. Benjamin, the M&M's general. Welcome. And Oops. Sorry. Welcome. And dang. Yes. Dang. 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 That, that was pretty good. Thank you. Um, Benjamin, the M&M's general. This one goes out to you. I brought a screen-used Star Trek uniform, man, but it smells terrible. You know why? Because William Shatner. I guess he boldly went where no one, no man had gone before in his suit. Definitely not now. All right. Yes, frontiers, right? Okay, now this one goes out to Paper Bag Man. Paper Bag Man, um, you know, Star Trek fans always expect a gift when they go to a convention. Did you know that? They call it the Enterprise. <laughs> the Enterprise. They... All right, I'll put that as a no laugh, Liz. I think that's also a no laugh. I'm not going to give that a laugh. The Enterprise. Benjamin, the M&M general, like the last one. Frontier's got a ding from Georgia Constitution Media. They're saying that's a laugh. Paper Bag Man also gave it a laugh. So that's that's good. That's solid, man. All right, hold on. This one goes out to um, Mark Rojas. Mark Rojas, I wrote a book about Star Trek. It had its it had pros and it also had its cons. Oh man! It has pros and cons. <laughs> You're laughing. Bad but good. Very so bad. that's a thing from you. You laughed at it, Blue Banshee. I Thank did. you. Do you appreciate that I have done Star Trek jokes for you tonight? Yes, actually. A hundred percent Star Trek jokes. Hundred percent. Keep it up. Oh, actually, I went to a, speaking of not keeping it up, I went to a Star Trek convention dressed as Chewbacca. Ouch. Ouch I know, it was, a, it was a Wookiee mistake. <laughs> it was a Wookiee mistake, thank you. Thank you, crowd. Appreciate you. Oh, you guys like that Wookiee mistake one. Thank you very much. We're getting, Paper Bang Man's given me a couple of dings. Three, three I mean, he's, Actually gave me five dings three times in a row, which is too many dings, paper bag man. I'm just I just recorded it as three. I hope that's okay. All right, hold on a second. This one goes out to Georgia Constitution Media. Georgia Constitution. I can't decide if I want to watch the original Star Trek or the Next Generation. I guess you could say I'm stuck between a Spock and Picard place. A Spock and Picard place. Yeah, got it. A Spock. Okay, I'm putting yeah. that as a no laugh <laughs> yes, no for laugh. you, me, and you. And that's both terrible. <laughs> but occasionally, you gotta go out on a limb like that and say a really bad one, because then sometimes they think it's funny. All right, we got some laughs from you guys. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoyed your time here at Chuckle Balls. All right, let's terminate this pro program, Blue Banshee. It's time for us to have a little chat back on the bridge. Yay! Um, cool. But first, this message from our sponsor. Every day was just a nightmare. The news, the daily grind, everything was a drag. I just didn't want to do a thing. Then, my doctor told me about Subscriva. Not a medical claim, for entertainment purposes only may cause anal leakage, feelings of overwhelming despair and existential dread, increased stupidity, diabetes, sudden death, halitosis, heart attacks, premature balding, itchy feet, severe headaches, forgetting how to talk, explosive diarrhea, hives, weak tendons, cavities, erectile dysfunction, hemorrhoids, arthritis, cotton mouth, earaches, greasy hair, and more. Visit our website for a full list of potential symptoms. Subscriva from Ball and Ball. Subscribe to life. And also this channel. Oops. Oops, you weren't supposed to see that last part, Liz. That was from our old program. But uh, what'd you think? Did you like that commercial? That was from my old, you know, my old self. But I brought it back for this. Yeah, it's good. Did, did you catch the name of that of that um, drug? It was like Subscriva. Yes, the actual chemical name is Den Den Ball you sub Den Ball you sub Yeah 
then ball like he's all right never yeah. mind <laughs> all right so you did pokemon music you did a bunch of work with Yu-Gi-Oh music you worked with blue man group tv and and all of this started in as in essence with star trek scores is that right yeah yeah. Like so, tell me it was it, and it was those two films, right? Wrath of James Horner's films, La, Wrath of Khan, and also hold on a second, I'm gonna bring us back to the uh, we're on the, we're supposed to be on the bridge, not on this planet surface. I'm gonna move us real quick. That's better. Um, so it was the James Horner scores for Wrath of Khan and Search for Spock, right? Yeah. Um, my parents were really into sci-fi back in the 80s and 70s and so they would take us to the movies and watch pretty much anything science fiction and then my brother and I would watch a ton of science fiction on the weekends and creature features and whatnot but the Star Trek themes actually had so much interest musically that I, I would feel things that I could never feel anywhere else so I wanted to be able to make other people feel something too through that medium what do you what what was it about holding scores that you found so gripping it was really all the star trek scores but you like those particularly yeah correct? I, I liked all of them but those two they just hit you in the core where the orchestrations were so ornate and they, he was doing things with instruments that normally you wouldn't hear at the time and right so many people have copied him since he probably copied other people too i mean it's just the way you know the industry goes but right of course music's that way i mm -hmm. mean people influence each other i mean when i listen to it you know i watched them in before this or i watched um wrath of khan before I, i'm sorry i watched spock before this there were el there were parts of it when it reminded me of danny elfman's music almost or Elmer Bernstein's Ghostbusters, there were some sort of almost horror elements, but like um, not straight horror, but you know, it, it was interesting. There was some chords and stuff, suspenseful, I think, more. Yeah. Would, am I crazy? No, you're not when crazy. When I draw at all. that. No, it, it had everything in the kitchen sink, too. I mean, the what he could do with instruments was just so riveting. So you're basically sitting there going, oh, this is a movie. Holy moly. And, and so you just wanted to, to do that. Yeah. So do you, are there things that he does? Like um, when you're working, does he have things that he, like techniques he uses in his scores that you try to replicate or that sort of influenced how you work? Yeah, a lot, mostly in the string and the horns uh, usage because the runs that he does with those instruments are he just kind of glues everything together. It's like, imagine a big pot full of mac and cheese and it's gooey and that's what those orchestrations are. Everything just perfectly kind of blends into each other. Right. And there's a precision to it. I mean, it's... It's very the methodical. People that, yeah. All right. I'm going to bring the... I'm going to bring the chat. Chat, I'm going to bring you in front of the... Forgive me. I put you in... There you are. Benjamin's asking, have we ever heard of Star Swine Trek or Star Wreck? Orson's Farm version, Alvin and the Chipmunks 80s version. Uh, okay, they're silly versions. Comedic versions. Swine Trek, maybe. Uh, not the other one. Yes, the Leonard Nemo and Spock record. Leonard was cool. I don't know if you ever went to the Boston Museum of Science, but if you go to the planetarium show there there's a voiceover of leonard nimoy i actually saw uh, him was... live at a star trek convention one year and he was really fascinating so tell me the story about when you were playing a gala in detroit and the muppets showed up no the, what was that the about? muppets didn't show up what happened was um as you know with playing anything live you should be prepared yeah. for everything right I guess so. Yeah, now <laughs> you're, you're really scaring sad. me. You're really Where are I? We're rolling, right? And what happened was I was told to play this event. You know, the mayor was there. The Detroit Pistons were there. All these rich, fancy people in ball gowns were there. And I was supposed to play nice, quiet, classical pre-dinner music. 
And I show up and this woman who's frantically running around with a clipboard and a headset and like walkie talkies. And she's like, there's a Dixieland jazz band and they're just so amazing and everyone's loving them. So what do you got? I said, classical. She's like, no. I said, right. Yes, of course. So I'm thinking, that happens. Uh oh. And I didn't prepare anything. Cause you were basically DJing the gig, sort of, right? Well, no, I was playing piano. Oh, you were playing piano. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm a, con- I'm a concert pianist. So, you know, you show up and you play classical music. And this was not the case. So right. I thought, uh-oh. And she goes, something peppy, something peppy. And I've got, like, you know, Chopin and Debussy and nice, nice really happy, whimsical things. And so I went to my, my wheelhouse, which is Gershwin. So ended mm-hmm. up just playing whatever Gershwin stuff I could think of off of the top of my head because I had nothing with me. And then she kept coming by. She's like, peppier, peppier, something really, really you know, jazzy, really happy. And I had no idea. So I whipped out like eight variations of the Muppet Show theme. I did honky tonk version. I did like a swing version. And just playing the Muppet Show theme as oh much as I gosh. could. Oh my gosh, that's and fantastic! I, I started like getting up on top of the piano, and, like sitting on the keyboard, and, like banging it with my shoe and everything, and just like going nuts on this thing. And you were playing it up as much as you could. Yeah, and so, I, I admire your your showmanship. I it's so, nerve wracking to be put in that position, right? But you kind of came out of it well. well. Yeah, no matter what, you got to play the show, so you got to do something. Right, you got to do so, something. Soon, there was like a crowd of people around the piano while I'm doing all these antics, and suddenly there's news cameras in my face. And so I'm just like... Really? This is on TV? Yeah. We can watch this? I don't even know it, because it was like... I'm going to try and find a link and put it in the description. It was like the 11 o'clock news back so many years ago. I have no idea. Oh, man. You you didn't save a clip of it? Uh, This is before you could save clips. I know. I know. It's still oh, so it's a, maybe somewhere it exists. It probably does somewhere in an archive or a closet somewhere in CBS oh, Detroit. Oh man, that's but, crazy. Um, um, that's so cool, and and also I was exhausted you, by the end of that night. I bet, and so wow, that's amazing. That's great. Well, the Muppets came through for you. Yeah. Um, and speaking of cute performers working with you. Your cat has been in a bunch of your works, including you did some work for Big D with Big D and the Kids Table, yeah. I think, the punk band from Boston, who are one of my favorite bands. And they, you, your cat was on it. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Well, Big D and the Kids Table, I met them all at the same time in the dorms back at Berkeley College of Music because we're all in the same building. Berkeley. And so, you know, we're all neighbors. We're all just hanging out and shooting the shit or whatever. So, you know, you become friends after a while and then, you know, mm-hmm. life moves on. You graduate and you go on to do stuff. And I did a bunch of random things uh, musically with Dave, the front man for Big D and the Kids Table. And so then he came up, uh, sent me a message one day and said, hey, do you want to do a couple of remixes for our remix album? I was like, yeah, sure. And I said, uh, one thing about the stuff that I tend to do is I tend to put an Easter egg in all of my projects, which happens to be my cat. And he says, all right, do it. I was like, okay. Well, he loves, he loves he cats, loves right? Cats. Totally loves cats. And What's your cat's name? Well, my cat's gone now, but his name was Chadu. Oh. It's, it's Japanese for monkey face. He was so cute. Oh, my goodness. That's adorable. He was my little boy for almost 20 years. He was awesome. No. Oh. And so you you kind of wo- you weave it into the music so it's not necessarily obvious that you can hear a cat. Yeah, you never noticed there was a cat in there. No, I've heard that record a million times, and I never I never noticed a cat yeah. was in there. Yeah, because I do a lot of sound Good design job. work. So you, you sample whatever... You can sample and then you manipulate the audio to a point where it's completely unrecognizable and transformed into something else, which also works well when you're doing orchestrating for, you know, various right. cartoons or movies. Right. Or whatever. So you, what do you turn a cat 
meowing into like some sort of an atmospheric yowling or stretch it out or do you well shorten it and to make it a punchy sound I or what do you kind of want to it? challenge you guys to figure out where the cat is in some of this stuff <laughs> okay well i'm going to put a link to the song you're talking about in the description and people can try and figure out where the cat noise is in it um, i don't have it in there yet but i'm going to put it in there i think there. it's the uh, she knows she's a nutcase track i think that's the uh, one okay. definitely cat in there there's cat and blue man group there was uh cat and Yu-Gi-Oh. there's there was cat everywhere Oh my gosh, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Sorry, that's not how it goes, but um, let's see here. I have more. I have another question for you. Oh, th here's my question. This is just a kind of a dumb one, but who's your favorite Starfleet captain, and what's your favorite like Star Trek series? If you you know, if there's a difference, that's like picking your favorite child. Why would you ask something like that? There's so well, many I mean, great, if you it, so many great, it, great series and captains and it awesome. makes you make a call. It makes you make a call about it. I make mean, I, I have to say, I mean, I, I love um, Cisco and I love Janeway. I actually, Voyager, I think is my favorite series. Um, though I lo also love um, Next Gen. Yeah, I liked all of them. Um, but I, I like Deep Space Nine too, man. Deep Space Nine was really good. Um, trying to think, yeah, I don't think Voyager was my favorite, but I, th I would say you know Captain Kirk and Picard were probably my first two favorites as far as the uh, captains go. Yeah, Captain Kirk and Picard, but I mean, because Kirk was Janeway. Ridiculous. Kirk was absolutely ridiculous. I know he's wonderful like that, but Janeway murdered Tuvix. <laughs> So that she's got that going for her. She was kind of. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, that brings us to um, us doing our meme section, guys. And um, Blue Banshee helped me to name it Shrek or Drek. I mean, Shrek. Trek or Drek. Shrek or Drek will be good, though, for when we do like a Shrek themed episode. Yeah. Let's go down to the surface of the planet. Perfect. Um, and I put a Star War, a Star Trek communicator thing there on you. All right, hold on. I'm going to move things around slightly. Let me just move the chat box over. I'm a planet. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I'm a planet. All right, Trek or Drek, we're going to show you some different memes. Okay. And everybody tell us if they're good, which is Trek, or if they're Trek, or if they're terrible, Trek. All right, the fun will now commence. You ready? That one's just to set the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's Trek. I'm trekking that one for sure. Yeah. That's quality, right? <laughs> Let's see here. We have some good chats we should talk about. Paper Bag Man, I want to ask you, is that Leonard Nimoy Spock record like a mu the musical? Like, does he do lounge music a la Captain Kirk? Um, I think he did some 70s stuff, if I recall. He, yeah, like he does Mr. Bojangles and stuff. Yeah. Yes, Georgia Constitution, I knew you would love Cats, man. Do you talk to them in that so soft voice like, there's nothing wrong, it's okay. <laughs> um... Yes, this is a trek. I be this is a trek. Absolutely. This one's getting treks. Okay, good. Now they're caught up to us. Let's move on to the next one. Remember when Voyager got trapped at Taco Bell? Because <laughs> right. look at their outfits. Oh, they look yeah. like Taco Bell uniforms that is the is idea. That is funky burrito, man. Yeah, I mean, they do look like uh, tra Taco Bell Uniforms. It did. It made. I say Shrek because it made me laugh. Hold yeah. on. I'm gonna slide up the chat. But if you think, hold on, chat. One second, my friends. Let me give you guys good positioning there. That's jazzy space stuff. Nice. That's cool, paper bag man. Hmm. All right. What do you think? Is this a Drek or a Trek, Blue Banshee? You can say Drek. That's a Drek. Okay, she's giving it a drink. Yeah. All right, let's move on. I'm glad. I'd like that you have 
It actually, this rendered weird and Whoa, it made it blue no, here. Back. You had a wedgie? What? Yep, yes, it is. Hold on. Your chances of getting wedgied by an Andorian are low, but never zero. Trek. Trek. <laughs> trek. <laughs> okay, that one's a trek. All right, guys. I need some, some feedback from the chat. But I think that that one's a trek for sure. We're going to keep moving through these. I'm gonna, I'll record you. Just say which one you're voting on when you vote. Okay. This is the Tuvix one. Remember Tuvix, you guys? Tuvix was when Neelix and Tuvok got combined in a transporter accident. Right, accident. Right. And they became this wonderful being named Tuvix. And he was a combination. He was the best of both of the guys. But then they decided they would take him back, and Janeway decided that she would murder Tuvix. Hold on. So they superimposed this with a shining? Wait a second. Yeah, I'm trying to... Gosh! It's like not... I'm sorry. It's not... Um, it's not letting me do this. Hold on. Oh, my God. That's annoying. It's like moving it around. I'm sorry. One second here. It won't let me do it. It won't let me move it. Why is it doing that? I'm sorry. Hold on. Well, come on, man. One second here. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to slide it up, and it's like stuck. All right, let's move on to the next. Let's 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 move on here. Hold on. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get this somehow. I swear to goodness. All right, one second, guys. Let's move on to the next one. It's, I'll tell you what it is. She says here's Janeway. All right. Um, gosh, it's just driving me nuts. Um, blue. One second here. It's like not allowing me to um select it. It's actually turning it into a different symbol for some reason. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. All right, never mind. We're moving on. I can't get I can't get stymied by this technical issue. Moving forward. We're moving forward. Hold on. Oh. How much would it cost to buy a singing in ensemble? You mean a choir? Fine. How much would it co a cost to acquire a singing ensemble? Drag. <laughs> Part of that was my delivery. Uh, you know, I'm just like, I can't even with this business. And it's just this one, dr this one, one that won't let me do it. All right. Cause, which is sad because I like. In my quest to be more human, I would like to state my opinion as if it's the only one that matters. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Maybe it's Drekish, though. That's Drek. There's, yeah. There's a lot of Drek actors in the Star Trek meme universe. Uh-huh. We got a trek. Good. We got one trek Thank from... You. Come with me. We you haven't got gotten a lot. Oh, good. We got a bunch of treks. What? Good. Hey, what's yeah, up, okay. Hungry Hoshans? are giving us a trek. Cool. Yes. Thank you, guys. All right. Hold on a sec. Hey, Tuvix, come with me. I got a cool surprise for you. Yeah, yeah. I love a surprise. Is it good? Oh, Tuvix, it's Ouch. to die Ouch. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> That's actually when she's taking him to kill him. Um, yeah, that's an owl. <laughs> so, yeah, that one. And that actor is actually like a Shakespearean actor who has done... I mean, and if you when you watch that episode, that's one of the reasons I love... He's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, that guy is an, a great actor. All right, hold on. Here's another Tuvix one. Tuvix, we found a way to get Tuvok and Neelix back. So all three of us can live, right? <laughs> so all three of us can live, right? <laughs> That's a trek. <laughs> it's a crossover Star Wars, Star Trek meme, as you guys, I'm sure, know. Oh, oh my God. That's good. That's um, good. Okay, let's keep going. Keep going. Oh, if I was in a room with if I was in a room with Khan, Dukat, and Tuvix, and I had a gun with two bullets, I'd shoot Tuvix <laughs> twice. 
Duvix. It's just, it's funny because she, like, cold-heartedly decides to kill Tuvix in the episode, and he's an absolutely brilliant and wonderful creature, be it person. So it's brutal. All right. This is just a little laugh. It's not really. Oh, man, Bank that, of that's Canada. been around for a while. Yeah, it's old school. Bank of Canada urges Star Trek fans to stop <laughs> spocking their fives. I mean, that's that's classic. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's Trek to me because it's so classic. Well, that, that's, I mean, that's it, hilarious to me because, you know, growing up in Detroit, we had so many uh, things going back and forth between Detroit and Canada. So, yes, so you know. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see one of those in the wild? Yes. Nice. Snoop Noggy <laughs> Nog. Trek. Definitely yeah, I'm going to give that a trek, too. Yeah. Snoop Noggy Nog is definitely worth a trek. All right, hold on a second. There he is. I'm going to I'm gonna make him nice and... Da -da -da -da. Yeah, a simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. No. Whoever Barclay's holodeck is, good job. That's a good meme. All right, hold on. Let's keep going here. I still have more, man. I'm telling. Okay, there it is. Brand new disposable crew member. Still in the factory plastic. Ow! Let's get you a red Ow. shirt and an exploding console, you. buddy. There's like so many jokes about the red shirt, guys. Let's get you a red shirt and an exploding console. <laughs> All right. Transporter locked. Captain, they've locked their transporter onto Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins. Ow! They're after Genesis. Ow! Trek. Trek. Definitely right? Trek. Definitely Trek. Yeah. yeah, that's a Trek. That's so bad. All right, we're getting some Treks. Uh, we got one Trek. <laughs> Paper Bag Man, are you from Canada? <laughs> cool. That is cool. I didn't know that about you, Paper Bag. Paper Bag Man actually is a Paper Bag Man. The, the reopening of Lego stores was a big event in 2020. Really? Yeah, people were lined up for blocks. Ow. Trek. Why does it say Riker's beard on his head? Because I think that that is like one of the meme guys or a website, Riker's beard. Oh, okay. I, I like that one, that's but good, I mean, then I, if you don't like it, it's fine. You can say Drek. We're getting Trek after Jen. Yes. Good. We're getting some good ones. Yes. Paper Bag Man is from Canada. Sweet. Just like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell. What's up, Paper Bag Man? Jean-Luc, we need to have a conversation about your fur. I only count five pieces of flair that you're wearing today. Dothan over there is wearing 32 and a great smile. Well, All right, I've, I've got four flares over here. You do. One, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, it's three. It's a Star Wars um, Wookiee. It's a Wikipedia one. The Wikipedia, one. the Star Trek Insignia, the Star Ghostbusters. Star Trek Insignia, Ghostbusters. And you have, have a, you can't really see it because it goes off screen, but you have a episode one gold medal from Star Wars around your neck. Well, the the thing next to the necklace i mean that looks like printer ink no yeah it's actually a piece of a, a fuse box okay it could be i thought it looked kind of like a spaceship all right like i'm giving this one a far i'm giving this meme a, a direct because i just didn't like it that much yeah that's i can't even remember the name of that movie but direct. i know when it's Very jennifer aniston so this replicator gizmo can make no, anything no, down no, to no, this no, hold on that movie was Office Space, the one with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, yes, yeah. it was. Oh, that was Office Space. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Can you do this guy's voice? Remember this episode? So this replicated gizmo can make anything. That He was like a southern dude. Oh, Down to the smallest guy. details. Correct. Computer, I've been hankering for a McDonald's so vanilla softy serve. The McDonald's ice cream file is suddenly being fifty fragmented. <laughs> Even the replicator can't make frosties from McDonald's. What is with that joint in, the, in making any 
kind of sauce or anything. Oh, there's a whole thing behind it, man. If you Google it on, uh, no, or I, you I've, look on, I've seen so many jokes about it. So yeah. Well, yeah, it's a thing. Like the guys who make the machine, and it's a scam, and there's people fighting it, and it's a whole thing. All right, hold on. What's going on here? I'm not saying it's totally good or bad, but a consequence of television becoming a nine episodes per season medium is not a 26 episodes per season media means we'll probably never get a bleep it. The Enterprise finds a sleazy 60s casino planet episode of Star Trek. They ever already again. did that. I know, but I'm just saying I get what they're saying because it's like. There were so many episodes that they would just end up stretching and just coming up with wacky ideas. Yeah, they did. But do it doesn't that. happen. Doesn't happen as much anymore. I get what she was saying, and it actually did make me laugh about it. So I give it a, I give it a trek, even though if it doesn't work as a meme, I give it a trek. I'll give it a trek. Okay. S Lauren, I liked it. Sorry, she didn't. <laughs> All right, hold on. Sorry, Lauren. Daily task, enter Nebula, Nebula to get coffee. Daily task two, promote Harry, end of list. We only have time for one thing today. Sorry, Harry. Because she was kind of like that. That's a little dreckish. She's, I, I like Janeway, but I love that she killed Tuvok in cold blood. My plans, 2020! Woo! Trek! <laughs> That's a trek. Okay, I'm giving that one a trek because I just love Tuvix. If you haven't seen the Tuvix episode of um, Star Trek Voyager, you gotta see it. You know, this is act. Go ahead. What, what, was, what were the years of Voyager? Because I missed a lot of Voyager, probably because of work. I am not. I think it was the 90s, early 90s. Um. December yeah. December 1964 this is the original 11 foot mo t foot long model of the Enterprise parked on a street in Burbank California um, I just it's not a meme but I just thought it was a really cool picture so I just put it in there all right that's I cool. give it a trek that's a trek yep it is a trek absolutely um Computer, restart program Janeway 66, and this time make them scream loud. <laughs> I like that. Younglings, and she's Anakin, and it's like her. She made a, a holodeck program where she gets to like slaughter two vixes. I know Drag. it's terrible. It, I, I'm. I'm I'm giving it a, a trek just because it's a Tuvix meme. Uh, they all got trek for me automatically. <laughs> yes, and uh, please yeah, upvote this episode and share it with a friend, please. Um, all right, here we go. Mess message coming in. For, what? Yes, balls. We're getting some treks. I'm sorry. I'm just so into this. Yeah, this some that is a oh, cool photo, is isn't it? Paper bag. I know. Hold on a second. I'm gonna. Yeah, that's ship Star Trek and Veggie Tales. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Everyone go. Put vote on the for... main. I already voted for a captain. First thing. We've been trying to reach you about your Shadow ship's extended warranty. Oh. Yes, that's that's right. It's vote for your favorite captain in the chat. There's a poll. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, Veggie Tales. Nice. I know Veggie Tales is classic. Cool. All right, hold on. <laughs> it's like his it's Shatner's like space mission photo with the guy in the it. Gourd. I love it. The, the gore. Let's get the trek. Trek for me. Yeah, that's a trek. That is a total trek. It's good. Man, I love, <laughs> All right. I love that guy. I know. I have to get the the action figure of him. I like those Migos. You know, Tuvix, I think I'll let you live. You are a great addition to the crew. April Fools! <laughs> Poor Tuvix, man. Like, if you watch it, it's so sad. Part of the reason this is funny is because it's, it's actually a heartbreaking episode, and the guy's an incredible actor. 
That's part of the reason that this is funny, guys, is that it's a really well done. You see, Doctor, I'm just a simple tailor. False information. <laughs> Checked by independent fact checkers. So, yeah. I really like that character, actually. I do, too. I give it a trek because I like that. I like that. He's one of my favorite things about Deep Space Nine. Yeah, he gets a trek. Mm -hmm. The actor is excellent who portrays him. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity spark. Sounds fascinating, Captain. I can't put it down. That's a dad joke. That is totally dad joke worthy. I'll count that as a trek. That's a check. Then. Okay, we got a track from Georgia Constitution, a check from Paper Bag Man. Man, these guys are really pinging. This is cool. Yeah, it's good. All right. Yeah, we... Video killed the radio. Oh. <laughs> All right, that gets a check. That's a track, That's a track. Right? <laughs> Does really that make bad. you want to go back and watch the episode again, Blue Banshee? Yeah. I think I might have to. <laughs> that was the final one. Oh, my gosh. That was the final one. And what that means is we're at the end of our episode. Liz, I love you, man. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Hey, it was, wasn't it? it was I have to ball. give. This is where we tell everybody it's a. This is the love fest portion. Georgia Constitution Media, I love you, man. Paper bag man, I love you. Benjamin, the M and M's general, I love you, brother. Mark Rojas, peace out. Uh, Georgia, uh, w we had Rescue Farm earlier. Hungry Hoshians. Everybody who's in the chat, who's who's watching, who didn't chat, thank you so much for being here, man. We appreciate you. And also, everybody who's watching it on the replay, one love, baby. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Um, any, any final words you want to share with our audience before we go into our final musical number for the evening? Live long and prosper and have a wonderful weekend. Sounds good. And a one, and a two. One, two, three. Dennis Ball, Dennis Ball. Just a lamb.